Kothari and Dr. Devind Parikh sir for inviting me for this uh, conference. So my topic is Whipples with Minimally Invasive Surgery. Are we there yet? So I have no conflict of interest for this presentation. So uh, as we all know, minimally invasive PD can be approached by two ways, laparoscopic and robotic. In both of these techniques, surgical view using high resolution endoscope is the key that enabled us to recognize precise anatomical structures so that we can do a more accurate dissection which leads to less bleeding and we have good landmarks to perform this surgery. So in overall, as compared to op open surgery, minimally in surgery has a more accurate dissection. So it is usually performed by surgical experts who have done so many open procedures, but it is still has a long learning curve, has more of complications due to its technical difficulty. As we all know, PD has two components, resection and reconstructions, and both components are equally important because if you have not done a good resection, patient will have recurrence in the long term. And if the reconstruction is not good, the morbidity is in one third of the cases and that will lead to mortality. So pre-operative planning for minimally invasive surgery is very important. First of all, we need to see the SMA and SMV branch pattern. You should know where is the IPDA artery, dorsal pancreatic artery, the first jejunal artery, it's both branches anterior and posterior, hepatic artery variation, particularly aberrant right hepatic artery then presence of any celiac artery stenosis or circumportal pancreas. So approach to safely perform SMA dissection in MIPD, you should be aware of each approaches. There are various approaches to look after the SMA and the anatomical landmark. As I mentioned, you should know the course of SMA, its anatomical landmark, including inferior pancreatic duodenal artery, first jejunal vein, first jejunal inferior PD vein, you have to sex safely expose first jejunal vein and all its branches and to expose the SMN nerve plexus. So there are various approaches in MIPD, anterior approach, posterior approach, right approach and left approach. Predominantly right approach is most of the time used in which you give traction, the duodenum on the right side and portal vein on the left side so that you can make a way along the SMA for clear dissection. Next point is the route of replace right hepatic artery. It can be a dorsal type from early division from the SMA or it can be an intrapancreatic type which you, we need to see on a preoperative imaging. On the next important pick is the jejunal vein. You need to know whether this first jejunal vein is a dorsal type, where is the J1V and J2V, then whether that it is has a dorsal and ventral pattern where J1V is ventral and J2V is dorsal or both art veins are ventral type. So you have to clip sequentially. Now this is one picture like this is posterior inferior PD vein which is draining into first jejunal vein and this is anterior inferior PD vein directly draining into SMV and there's another example. So this you have to divide sequentially to get the good resection. Now this is the next vessel is inferior PD artery. If you have any doubt you can use the ICG mode to see whether it is coming from SMA and clip it so that you don't find any bleeding in the post-operative period. So this systematic vascular ligation during MIPD is very important. You ligate first gastrocolate trunk of Hanley that takes care of anterior superior PD vein. Next is gastrodonal artery that takes care of anterior and posterior superior PD artery. Then during unseen dissection, anterior and posterior inferior PD veins, you have to ligate sequentially then the inferior PD artery and the last after the dissection of whole mesopancreas you found posterior superior PD vein that's the last vein to divide. Now after this resection as I mentioned reconstruction is also very important. So pancreatic ostomy, which is an Achilles heel of PD you, though there is no ideal method there are n number of methods available but the this reconstruction should be safe easy to perform and the most important thing, during the learning curve, you can do this procedure and expertise on this technique. So 
most of the time we are doing N2 side rectal mucosa technique. We have modified Bloomgar technique, modified Hidelberg technique, and among these, the Bloomgar technique is most popular. And then we have N2 side invagination technique. Now, compared to this, we have another which is in recent literature shown to have a good result as compared to PG, pancreatic gastrostomy. So you have binding or invagination PG, which we can do by original method, which is two layer, which are, you give two layers of bursting sutures, or a modified one, where only a single layer, full thickness bursting suture is taken for its anastomosis. Then we have ductal mucosa and sometimes ductal parenchyma. So MIPG is also feasible during the minimally invasive pancreatic duodenectomy. So only important thing is consistent practice and standardization of the technique is very essential to improve the results and to get the good outcomes. So as we compare PJ versus PG, PG has a slight edge over PJ in the uh, randomized control trials published last year, 2020 and 2016. But when we go to Cochrane database meta-analysis and a meta-analysis of randomized control trial published in June 2018, they show that there is no difference among ductal mucosa and invagination PG and PG in the prevention of POPA. Though it is important to know that PG leads to increased intraluminal PPH and PG has slightly increased incidence of intra-abdominal abscess. So you have to select this technique as per your expertise and more RCTs are required on this topic to get the concrete results. So now let's compare laparoscopic PD versus open pancreatic duodenectomy. What are the results say? So there are number of retrospective studies published till 2017 December where they compare 27 studies in this meta-analysis and they found that minimally invasive PD leads to reduction in the POPH and wound infection with higher R0 section rate and more lymph node yield. So they concluded that MIPD is safe, feasible, worthwhile with long operative time which is very important. So they mentioned that randomized control trial is required on this topic. So the same year in 2017, the famous plot trial from our country by Professor Palani Velusar, they mentioned that laparoscopy offered a shorter hospital stay with long operative duration with no difference between the terms of DGE, POPF, POPH, lymph nodes retrieved and R0 rate. So they got a very good results. Subsequently, next year 2018, Next trial was Padulab trial. In this trial, first important thing, they have a conversion rate in one fourth of the patients. They also found a significantly shorter length of hospital stay and they also mentioned that this has a favorable post-operative course with maintained oncological standards. So these two trials were a single center study. The next year, 2019, there was a Leopard 2 trial. This was a multi-center randomized control trial. This raised few questions about the laparoscopic PD. This trial was prematurely terminated due to difference in the 90-day mortality rate. Though it was not statistically significant, but LPD was associated with more complications. So they concluded that there are safety concerns and experience, learning curve, and the high volume center can influence the outcomes. So after these conflicting results of from multi-center study and single center study, we have two meta-analysis on the same three RCTs published in 2019 and 2020. They mentioned that these findings of the results from these three RCTs should be interpreted with caution because of high clinical and statistically heterogeneity of data. There is a high risk of bias and there is a moderate to very low certainty of evid evidence. So they also mentioned that LPD has no advantage over OP open PD. Following this, we have another multi-center randomized control trial on the same topic, which also, which is from China and also mentioned the same thing that the clinical benefit of laparoscopic PD compared with open has a marginal benefit despite extensive procedural expertise. Though they found that LPD is safe, feasible with a shorter hospital stay, but still a word of caution with this technique. So why it is getting difficult. So there are studies done to find why it is happening. So they found that, that there is a learning curve associated with LPD. So at least you should have done 40 cases to get the proficiency to get the good results. So a long learning curve is required and you need a mentor. 
so that you learn this technique properly so that you can get a good results now after this laparoscopic approach now let's compare robotic with the open surgery so robotic surgery has uh, overcome as we all know some limitations of laparoscopic surgery in terms of dexterity the degree of motion the 3d magnification of the camera tremor filtrations it improved ergonomics so so uh, professor gilinati has per first performed his robotic whipples and they published their data in 2018 mentioning that standardization of the key step is the key for or the to improve your learning curve and to get the good results so they mentioned that rct with an application of standardized technique is necessary on this topic so we have some robotic versus open comparison group and there are uh, retrospective studies which have mentioned that robotic pd has a longer arrival time less blood loss shorter length of hospital stay and lower wound infection rate so they mentioned that it is again safe feasible to open pd with regards to short term outcomes these are all retrospective studies and they take care of only the short term outcomes so there was another meta analysis which compared the histopathological outcomes of this robotic approach so what they found in this meta analysis they included 24 studies in which malignant disease was taken in 17 of the studies and they found that in the primary endpoint the resection marginal rate is better in rpd as compared to the open approach with a better lymph node yield so they concluded that robotic pancreatic duodenectomy provides better histopathological outcomes as compared to the open approach so we need a randomized controlled trial on this topic which is not available so there are two rct which are ongoing one is the portal trial and one is the europa trial and the results of these trial would be interesting to know in coming years now now let's compare robot and open approach till now we discussed laparoscopy robot now let's combine what is happening when we co compare robot versus laparoscopic so there is one data from american college of surgeons where they compared 235 patients in laparoscopy group versus 193 in robotic approach they found that uh, robotic pd is with similar 30 day overall complication rate compared to lpd but further studies are required to establish which is the best approach for this complex operation there is another systematic review and meta analysis published in 2020 which show that this is again from the six non randomized comparative studies which mention that robotic pd has significantly lower conversion rate compared to laparoscopy this is important with a transfusion rate and a shorter hospital stay though there is no difference in terms of blood loss operating time post operative complications and r0 so they concluded that robotic approach appears to offer some advantage over laparoscopic one but they mention that the quality of study is limited to cohort and rct is still required on this topic so there is another meta analysis which is looked after which what is the best choice among all these approaches so they terminate make a terminology like total laparoscopic because this is heterogeneity in data some paper is mentioning total laparoscopic some is mentioning laparoscopic assisted some is totally robotic robotic assisted total robotic this is a hybrid approach you do resection with laparoscopy and reconstruction with robotic approach so they mention that total laparoscopy is often the worst approach lapd high probability of being the worst approach total robotic is a high probability of being one of the best and the hybrid approach is best for dge hospital stay lymph node and post operative morbidity there is another study which is a network meta analysis which compare one to one with the open lap and open robotic approach which also which mention that mipd has improved rate of ssi pulmonary complication and a shorter hospital stay with no compromise in the oncological outcomes so to conclude mipd has pros as well as cons pros as well as cons it has a minimized operative wound reduced post operative pain early post operative recovery less addition and this happens because of the magnified view and a more accurate surgery but along with this definitely there is a increase in the operative duration as compared to open one it require advanced surgical skills sometime especially in robotic you may overlook some damage to the other organs because you are restricted to one compartment 
difficulty in managing some massive bleeding and limited range of motion which was there with laparoscopy it is overcome by the robotic technique so to conclude so where are we now laparoscopic pd we have restricted range of motions requires a learning curve and safe in the expert hands and the clinical benefit is marginal despite the extensive procedural expertise so robotic pd as compared to laparoscopy has slightly edge and it has a shorter learning curve of around 20 to 40 cases with easy reconstruction because of the dexterity of the instruments and the as i mentioned rct is ongoing to get the good results what are the so adoption of mipd technique may possibly improve patient outcomes but you have to prefer a surgical approach according to your surgical expertise thank you